Any of those overlap at all? Or not? Probably not. I mean, you know, if you're caring and um, and feel emotion, that's something that somebody with uh, Asperger's or um, or autism spectrum can't really do, um, and so on. Unfortunately, like all of these, all of these brain-based uh, syndromes, there are secondary emotional consequences, and you can't, and they are highly at risk for depression, withdrawal, you know, panic attacks, anxiety and you know some risk for suicide but so are individuals with attention deficit disorder and and or dyslexia so oh nice Let's see what happened did i just turn this off come on there we go okay um their behavior is likely to be misinterpreted um and so on I'm going to just go on because, um, again, NLD and ADHD, they, you know, probably look different, but uh, but they have some, you know, there's some overlap, <coughs> particularly with uh, in terms of their frustration. In both cases, uh, a student with uh, with NLD can be. <coughs> Can be can get very frustrated because they're misinterpreted, and uh, and they don't necessarily have emotion good emotional regulation. As can a student with ADHD, they may both explode and be a behavior issue, but it really comes from a different place. Um, the uh, uh, NLD tends to have a slower cognitive tempo than the student with ADHD who can be hyperactive and seem, you know, uh, and seem like they're going a million miles and seeking out novel situations, but both of them have slow processing, interestingly enough. Yeah. Could it have both? ADHD and NLD? Yes. Well, you could have ADHD features. Or ADD and NLD. AD, it's always ADHD. ADD is not actually a diagnostic. We use it, you know, colloquially, but it's always ADHD. Yes. Actually, my daughter's been diagnosed with both NLD and mm -hmm. ADHD and dyslexia. Yeah. And she's out of hearing. Oh, wow. The poor kid's kind of screwed. Yeah, no, um, it used to be, you know, I mean, again, diagnostic criteria change over time. And the last diagnostic and statistical manual, the DSM 4, had, uh, they, you know, it excluded NLD. If you had ADHD, you couldn't have NLD. But the new DSM 5 coming out in 2015 has gotten rid of that. So I just read a journal article about it. So yeah, so yeah, you can. When my daughter was younger, NLD wasn't recognized to get any services, so she was diagnosed as Asperger's. Mm -hmm. And our uh, psychologist said all, all kids with Asperger's, all kids with NLD have Asperger's, but not all kids with Asperger's have NLD. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder how much of some of that diagnostic stuff from back then were just kind of back to ways to get the services you need and doctors are a little more flexible. Could be. So she carries that all the way into today where the school thinks she has Asperger's and she really Yeah, I mean, there, there are, um, yeah, I mean, there, these are, these are squishy diagnostic categories is the thing. And NLD is actually, I'm not even, you know, it's not really an official diagnosis in the DSM-4. I'm not even sure it's going to be in the DSM-5. However, it's a recognized condition somehow. And uh, again, it's eligibility for services probably, I mean, you could get an IEP probably if there's some other, you know, uh, uh, if 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 your student is is below what the whatever the district's cutoff is for reading or math or writing or something like that. For NLD specifically, not necessarily. Um, and for ADHD, you can get a 504 plan, 
but if ADHD is the primary issue, you're not going to get an IEP. So, um, you know, uh, and some of it depends on how the academics plays out, you know. I mean, I've had the frustrating experience to work with children here at Groves and bring them up in their ability to read because, you know, they're dyslexic, it was a struggle, but they worked and I worked and they're better now. And the district says, sorry, we can't give him an IEP with reading because he's too high. Well, you know, then of course, if he goes back and he doesn't get any kind of services for reading, how is he going to continue to make progress? But, you know, I, there's a reason why I haven't worked in public schools for a long, long time. Yes? Well, I was just curious to hear you mention that they have a slower cognitive tempo because when um, Russell Barkley was here in November, he was talking about growing support for a new condition called slow cognitive tempo. Yeah, and so, some of the people that might be considered NLD <laughs> may well fit in that. Okay. But it's not there yet. I mean, he, I know. He's very so big on that. between the two? Oh, yeah. But they're not quite the same? Or we don't know. It depends really on. Honestly, it'll depend a lot on the impact of um, how severe visual-spatial processing and social skills are, are, you know, as compared to, you know, distractibility and slow cognitive tempo and the sort of things and that that ADHD without hyperactivity would have. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's very hard. And, you know, I don't know, you know, I mean, the DSM is, I, I wonder if we reach the end of our ability to, to really <coughs> be effective, because there's so much politics in it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can't believe. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I have been solicited for both, you know, to, for commentary on both, um, on both the reading LD and the ADHD people, and uh, it's, I, it's very, very, very hard. So, but it's important because it's what gets students services. Um, the term learning disabilities really means nothing, but it's a legal term, and that's what gets you services. Um, so, okay, so how can we help students? One of the things we can help them do is to organize and time and memory. So, basically, one thing that is really important, um, and you know, honestly, this is really for all students. It's important that there be a consistent routine. That the day in a classroom is organized, and there may be different activities, and it's, you know, there may be new things happening, but it's all within a regular routine framework. In addition to that, you know, there needs to be agendas on the board so everybody knows what's going to happen. It doesn't have to spend valuable cognitive resources wondering about that. Homework board, homework should be, you know, out there on the board, written. Nobody, no student should have to remember what the teacher says is homework. Bad practice. And they should have planners. We have master notebook there, which is, you know, kind of an, an, a name for a, a specific um, strategy of handling a planner. But basically, planner and you know, we have study skills, and note taking, uh, <coughs> note taking, uh, <coughs> summary writing, main idea work, uh, question generation. All kinds of uh, all kinds of things that should be taught from early early grades in uh, developmentally appropriate in uh, in developmentally appropriate ways all the way through high school and so on. Um, students need breaks in lessons. Uh, you can't keep doing the same thing forever and ever. You have to be able to move. Exercise is more important than we ever, than, than we, we knew it intuitively, but now we actually have research that proves it, that um, executive function improves, can improve with exercise. 
and uh, assignments need to be given so that they can be done in chunks. Otherwise, it seems overwhelming. Um, there needs to be a calendar that's referred to. Time is a, is a very abstract concept, and so having devices in the room that, that track the passage of time is important so that students get used to how much, you know, how much, uh, what an hour feels like, what 10 minutes feels like, etc. And then there 